Hi, this is JD, and in this lecture we're going to be looking at rational expressions. So we're going to look at um, evaluating rational expressions. We're going to look at uh, how to find restrictions. We're going to look at how to simplify rational expressions, and then some operations, including uh, multiplication and division, uh, addition, subtraction, and solving equations we'll look at next week. <coughs> so let's first look at how to evaluate an expression. So just a little review, if you have zero divided by a number, that's going to give you zero. So if it's on, it's okay. Now, if it spells no, which is n divided by zero, that's when it's undefined. And if you have uh, zero divided by zero, which is really rare, but it would be still divided by zero, so it would be undefined. All right, so I'm going to rewrite the expression, which is 3x parentheses x minus 2 over 2x minus 1, and they want us to evaluate it when x equals 0. Now, if it turns out that's divided by 0, then we would state that's undefined. So let's substitute. You would replace all the x's with 0. I use parentheses here, but it doesn't matter. You can use a uh, multiplication symbol. Uh, the important thing is that you're consistent. So the top is actually zero because three times zero, this is ends up being negative two, but anything times zero is zero. And then in the denominator, that's two times zero, which is zero minus one, which gives you just a negative one. So we end up with zero divided by negative one 0 divided by any number, except for 0, would be 0. And so 0 is your final answer. All right, now with this one, let's look for restrictions. Now, for restrictions, it's based upon that NO spells no undefined. So what you do is you just focus on the denominator. You take the factors, so anything that's separated by multiplication or parentheses, because that indicates multiplication, set those equal to zero. In this case, not equal to zero because they are restrictions. Um, we don't want the denominator to be equal to zero. So that's why I put not equal zero there. And then you would solve for each of these. So 3x does not equal zero. Um, divide both sides by three and you get x does not equal zero. With x minus eight does not equal zero. You would you want to get x by itself so you would add eight to both sides. So x does not equal eight. And the restrictions so both zero and eight would be answers. So now let's look at simplifying rational expressions. So basically what you want to do is you want to think through how you would do it with fractions. Because the steps for rational expressions are similar for rational numbers, which are fractions. So the steps are going to be rather similar. So first step is to factor everything. Second step is to cancel common factors out with the numerator and denominator. So let's look at a fraction. So you have 21 over 35. Let's factor those. So 21 is 3 times 7 and 35 is 7 times 5. Now since they're fractions, those 7's will cancel out. 1 
7 in the numerator with 1 7 in the denominator. Like 7 over 7 would be 1. That's why you're able to cancel things out here. And that would just leave you with 3 over 5. So let's look at an example of this. So first you want to factor. So here with both of these, you would use the AC method um, because uh, the 5, it, what's in front of the x squared is not equal to 1. So you, you would want to do this for both of these. And to with factoring with these type of problems, you just want to do it as side work. I'll, I'll show you that with, in another example. So I factored both of these. The x minus 1's cancel. And just leaves me with 5x minus 1 over 3x plus 7. Now, you might be tempted to cancel out those x's, but you can't. The reason for that is because there's plus signs and minus signs in between, and you can only cancel out factors with factors. That's why um, you're factoring them, because you can only cancel out factors with factors. So let's look at multiplying rational expressions. Multiplying rational expressions, like multiplying fractions. Uh, so first step is to factor everything. Step two is you can cancel within the same fraction or diagonally, one numerator with one denominator. And then step three is you wanna multiply across, just like you would do with multiplying fractions, you would multiply numerator with numerator, denominator with denominator. All right, so let's look at an example. We'll simplify these. So 27 actually goes into both 27 and 81. 27 goes in 27 once and 81 three times. And then cancel the other diagonal. Looks like 2 goes into both of those. So 2 goes into 18 9 times. And 2 goes into 52 26 times. Then just multiply across. So 1 times 26 is 26. 9 times 3 is 27. So that would be 26 over 27. So first step is you want to factor everything because you can't cancel things out on, at, on this point because of the minus signs and plus signs in between. So x squared minus 9, that's a difference of squares. So it would be x minus 3, x plus 3. The negative 2x minus 6, pull out a negative 2, and that leaves you with x plus 3 when you pull out the GCF. And with x squared minus 5x plus 6, you want to do um, the product sum method. So what two numbers, when multiplied together, it gives you 6, and when add together, it gives you negative 5, negative 2, and negative 3. Then just go crazy and cancel things out. So you can cancel out the x minus 3's, one numerator with one denominator. You can cancel out the x plus 3's. And then this negative 2 and this 4 can also cancel. Um, the reason why is because it's multiplication in between. So the negative 2, I'm just going to cancel that out. Negative 2 um, goes into 4 twice, but negatively. Uh, it's the same as dividing. So 4 divided by negative 2 is negative 2. Um, so that's where that's coming from. And then you would just multiply across. So that would be negative 2x cubed over x minus 2. All right, so now let's look at division. And 
once you know how to do multiplication, you know how to do division because um, it's just like dividing fractions. And when you divide fractions, you did KCF, which means keep it, change it, flip it. And then you would follow the multiplication steps. So let's keep it, change it, flip it. So we have 36 over 24 divided by 14 over 8. Keep it, keep the 36 over 24 the same. Change division to multiplication and then flip the 8. Uh, yeah, flip the 14 over 8, making it 8 over 14. Now, once, once it's multiplication, you can do the, the same steps. So you can cancel things out diagonally. So eight goes into eight once, and then eight goes into 24 three times. You can do the same thing with 14 and 36. So two goes into both of those, two goes into 14 seven times, two goes into 36 18 times. And then I can simplify the 18 and the 3, because 3 goes into both of those. So 3 goes into 3 once, and then 3 goes into 18 six times. And then just multiply across. 6 times 1 is 6. 1 times 7 is 7, so that would be 6 over 7. All right, so this is the example where, I, where I'll show you what I mean by um, doing side work. And I would just recommend doing all your factoring as side work. Um, some factoring is going to be easier than others, so you don't necessarily need side work. Um, but sometimes factoring can involve multiple steps. So, and, and just to remove clutter, uh, do some side work. All right, so first let's keep it, change it, flip it. So the 12 y cubed over y squared minus five, that's gonna stay the same. Division uh, changes to multiplication, and then we have one minus y over six y. Like that. So let's factor these on the side. We're going to factor um, 5y squared minus 5, and then this 1 minus y is kind of odd looking. So we're going to, I'll, I'll show you how to factor that. It's going to be kind of weird, but. So with the 5y squared minus 5, first take the GCF out. The GCF is five, so you pull that out. That's gonna leave you with five parentheses y squared minus one. Always look for the GCF first when you're factoring. Y squared minus one is the difference of squares. So that'd be y plus one, y minus one. So that whole thing factors to five parentheses y minus one, y plus one. So that's not exactly the same as one minus y, but it looks similar, right? The y minus one and the one minus y. You can pull out it, if you pull out a negative, you can actually switch the order. So let me show you how to do that. So y minus, sorry, one minus y, pull out the negative, that's gonna change the signs, negative one, plus y. This is addition. With addition, order doesn't matter. So you can flip it, make it y minus 1. And that negative comes along for the ride. So I would do all your factoring as side work and then put that into the main problem. And you see that the y minus, one, y minus 1's cancel. The y in the denominator here cancels out with the y cubed, leaving you with y squared. And that 6 would also cancel out with the 12, um, leaving you with a 2 in the numerator. So 2 times y squared times negative 
times the negative gives you negative 2y squared and then in the denominator since the y minus y y minus 1 canceled and the 6 canceled and the y canceled that only leaves you with the y parentheses y plus 1 and when you're canceling things out it's just a bunch of ones and you're multiplying so that's why it um, it just cancels all right that's it for this week so what did we do we went over how to evaluate a rational expression which is just uh, substitution if it spells no equals to zero um, if it's sorry if it spells no it's undefined that would be some number divided by zero if it's zero divided by some number if it's on it's okay which means that it equals zero finding restrictions with that undefined, we don't want the whole denominator equaling to zero. So we don't want that. So the restrictions make the denominator equal to zero. So what we did is we took each factor of the denominator and set that equal to zero. Actually set it equal to not equal zero <laughs> with those restrictions. Um, then we simplified uh, the sets for simplification and multiplication and division are the same with all fractions. So same steps. So when you're simplifying a rational expression, you factor everything and then you cancel out a numerator with a denominator. With multiplication, just like fractions, when you're multiplying you can can you want to factor everything first and then you want to cancel you can either cancel within the same fraction or diagonally and then when you divide rational expressions you keep it change it flip it keep it the same the first fraction change the operation from division to multiplication and then you flip the second um, fraction and then once you do that, keep it, change it, flip it, it's all the steps for um, same steps as multiplication. And that's it. That marks the end of this video. Please like, share, and subscribe. And if you have any questions, put them in the comments below. Thank you, and I hope you have a wonderful weekend.